Hello, my name is Elisa, and since I only started getting into art a few years ago, I got to realize with time that looking at art is much more interesting when you've got some kind of background knowledge on its history because it's absolutely beautiful. It, like looking at a photograph, having the story behind it makes it much more enjoyable to look at. So, uh, about seven years ago, I went to the Lyon Museum of Fine Arts and I know that had my 10-year-old self known more about the history of art, she would have enjoyed much more. So I find this uh, an amazing opportunity, it, this opportunity that the Doncaster Council is giving to young people and all the whatever age uh, to get more knowledgeable about the history of art a really great opportunity to uh, enjoy it and educate yourself in a fun way and really getting to know this beautiful language that is art. If there was an art movement which has influenced modernism most and given 1900s art its kickstart, that would be post-impressionism. Post-impressionism developed in 1885 when a few artists started to get more visually and conceptually diverting from the French Impressionist art style. Part of the movement of artists was Paul Cézanne, Vincent van Gogh, Georges Seurat and Paul Gauguin, while Impressionism focused more on sacrificing details to capture true life from life Post-Impressionists were more prone to sacrificing light and colour accuracy to evoke strong emotion which led to unnatural or exaggerated saturation of colours. Despite the fact that light wasn't depicted accurately by Post-Impressionists, it was used nonetheless to create a sense of surrounding mood. Louis Lanquetin and Van Gogh both merged a juxtaposition of warm and cool hue, specifically yellow and blue, to give that impression of the cold air of the night next to the heat of the gatherings of people who were in town centres and bars. The choice of colours may not be accurate to reality, however it engages the viewer more and engulfs him into the scenery. Symbolism was also part of the post-impressionist tools to achieve that emotional experience. For instance, Van Gogh had a recurring pattern of swirls in his paintings, which might relate to his shifting and deteriorating state of mind. The iconic Starry Night was painted when the artist was recovered into an asylum at saint remy de provence The imagery leans on the fantastic due to exaggerated lights and swirls. However, also many of the aspects in the painting, for example the town, which he couldn't have possibly seen from his window. Many mathematicians and scientists have tried to explain why he would have seen these words. However, since Van Gogh was a post-impressionist, it is simply possible that he had imagined it and that he was just trying to depict his emotional turmoil. The accentuated pattern may in some way intermingle with the current situation in his life, when he had already mutilated his ear and accepted his poor mental health, as he had already checked himself into the asylum. The progression of his broken colour technique becomes gradually more evident with time, especially in the last three years of his life. In comparison to his series of sunflowers, some which had been painted to decor the yellow house he was going to share with his friend Gauguin. His last painting features broken segments, which were a step further from the swirls he had started to display after his fight with Gauguin and his mental breakdown. In contrast with Van Gogh's last painting, Starry Night Over the Rhone has a higher color sky than the river, which makes it look less gloomy. This painting also has a very heartfelt feel, thanks to the couple in the corner, which seems to enjoy the calm evening.
This was the period in his life where he had just moved into Ar with hopes for a new start away from the demands of the city. It is, however, towards the end of the year that his paintings have started to change, together with his mental health. Brushwork can be easily seen in his early work, however with time it starts to curl and feature racing lines, which almost look feverishly done. In fact, most of his more than 20,000 artworks were produced in his final two years, which suggests during that time his painting might have gone increasingly fast. Van Gogh had only sold one painting in his life, the Red Vineyard at Arles. The rest of his paintings were made famous only after his death by his brother's wife and children. Now, his portrait of Dr. Gachet is one of the most expensive paintings ever sold at an auction, and it sold for $82.5 million in under three minutes, which would be more than £65 million. Pounds. Although post-impressionists were unified by the need to break from impressionism and focus on emotions, they all had different stylistic choices to reach that goal. Van Gogh had his whirling, Seurat his pointillism, and Cézanne his geometric approach, which later influenced Cubism. For example, Van Gogh used to take more liberties in his brushwork than Cézanne. As it tended to take a more textual quality, in addition to the strokes being much more individual and clearly separated. Seurat's pointillism is a really interesting concept. Seurat wanted the viewer to blend the colours with his own eyes. He wanted the viewer to come up with interpretations on his own, as he displayed face expressions which looked deep in thought. Most people in the painting seem to be in their own world and be thinking of their own troubles. I personally really admire the work of post-impressionists, as they were really revolutionary in their own time. Like impressionists, they broke away from convention, but the twist that really made their movement special was the fact that they tried to depict what they personally saw into a scene, which gave us the possibility to see through their eyes. Although not many artists identify as post-impressionists today, the post-impressionist movement continues to have its impact on art, as it encourages artists to give art their own shape and twist. Vincent van Gogh once said that, Normality is a paved road, it is comfortable to walk, but no flowers grow on it. Now, thanks to him and the other revolutionary artists, art has new ramifications and blossoms. As previously mentioned, Post-Impressionism has been fundamental for the beginning of the 20th century art, as it had been the foundation for Expressionism, Fauvism, Cubism and much more. And the term Post-Impressionism had only been invented decades after, so that it could attribute to a group of artists, and that would be Seurat, Gauguin, Cézanne and Van Gogh, and some other Impressionists, that fundamental step that they took away from Impressionism and that inspired these other movements. I would like to thank the Doncaster Council for sponsoring this informative programme about art movements and I would like to also thank uh, the art Doncaster Art Fair for the support that they give to local artists by displaying and selling their work. The Doncaster Art Fair sets up and displays work multiple times a year I really find it an amazing opportunity for emerging artists as it constantly keeps active and comes up with ideas to support art in the Oko area. I hope this video has been useful and it gives the opportunity to look at art in that different light, whether it is in Doncaster or further, once things have calmed down. Take care.